All right, so Todd and I are back. We are here with another tier list, and the band of the week. They dropped a new song, new album details, new tour. Surprise dropped, I might add. So I figure what better time to rank their albums. And this is something I would have wanted to do eventually anyway because they're my all-time favorite uh, band, And uh, which is going to be great. It's going to be trying for me because I'm going to have to put fanboyism aside and really rank these honestly. Because they're not all good. They can't all be on the same line because that's just absolute bullshit. But anyway, Todd and I both have a history of this band. I got him into Metallica back in high school. And so I think he's uh, educated enough to uh, have great opinions as well. And uh, yeah, I think he's going to even be less biased than me, which is perfect. We wanted to get our buddy Pat on, who you guys may or may not remember from old podcasts and old interviews on our YouTube channel. Uh, he's a metal aficionado. He would have been amazing because he's kind of a crotchety old man that'll just kind of shit on everything. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Like every, everything's classic rock. If 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 a band has any albums past their demos, it's classic rock, which is great. But we're going to start off, get right to it, starting in order, kill them all. This is the debut, 1983. This is the album that started it all and really uh, put them on the national pedestal. This album is interesting because it's their album that listen to this record, it's sped up Motorhead. It sounds like yeah, Diamond Head yeah. makes a Motorhead. And, uh, you know, with a lot of bands that become really big, that time to grow and develop, usually at their final form, like their, you know, their real sound. I always think of a band like Tool, where they started off with like the whole opiate undertow thing, and then you get to Anima, and that's okay. We know we know what Tool is about now, but then they get to Lateralist, and they've just evolved. Like this is their peak. Like this is what everything else was building to. And then after Lateralist, they just kind of like recycle themselves. Then it's like okay, there's nowhere else to go from here, but a little bit down. Um, anyway, Kill 'Em All. This album for me. It is one of the classics. It's very raw. It's got that 80s reverb in the vocals, right? But it's got a great sound to it. I love it. It's got a very live sound. Um, I like how juvenile it is. It's got a lot of great classic riffs. Uh, Kirk Hammett's solos, I would say he's underdeveloped because all his stuff is just like really shreddy fills. Like nothing's like super musical, right? Not a whole lot. No. It's just like, <laughs> but it's it's just of the time. But these songs are undeniable for me, man. Hit the lights. You know, you have Motor Breath. There's so many bangers on here. Whiplash. Four yeah, Horsemen. Fire. Metal Militia. Seek all and Destroy. Of yeah. Now, like I said, this is where it's going to get tough for me because I love so much of their catalog really, really highly. But if I really got to split hairs here, they got better. They got even better, right? So I can't call this S, right? I can't. Yeah. Because... I have to leave for room for the real S's. So, but I'm trying to leave appropriate room. Is this an A or a B? So the fact that this had uh, Dave Mustaine in it. Um, not on the record. Well. Not, on, well, the not record. on the record. But uh, didn't he write some of the songs? Yeah, he wrote a hand. Um, he wrote like half the album or whatever. Um, I, something about this album. When I first got into Metallica, I wasn't a fan of this album. But the, the older I got, the more I love it. Like this album is nonstop bangers, dude. I love the cover art. I think the cover art is awesome, dude. It's classic. Um, it's a simple it. kill them all with the hammer and everything. And man, I would give this, I give this album an A. I think this album is fantastic. I think it's awesome too. I mean, I'm happy putting yeah. it at A as well. Okay. So, and I think the album, there's not a bad track on it. No. And like no. I said, I love the raw. I love how juvenile it is. But yet when you think about all their peers, when you think of the other big four of thrash metal, it's funny because the, all their debuts have some commonality, right? It, it all it just like just like Metallica, Anthrax, Megadeth, Slayer. It took them a few records to really morph into their own thing. You know, into the mid '80s, into into the '90s, all four of those bands were completely different. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but listen to have you listened to Show No Mercy? Not recently. Okay, if you listen to Kill 'Em All and you listen to Show No Mercy. And if you listen to uh, 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 why can't I fucking spit it out, man? My my fucking brain is just killing me, man. 
uh, if you listen to <laughs> what the fucking Megadeth day. Oh, uh, well, jump of the fire. You talking about the songs that Dave wrote? You're cutting out. Is giving me if give me issues. If you listen to all their debuts, they all kind of sound similar in that they all are heavily leaning in that new wave of British heavy metal sound. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. but with a little bit of differences. Like Metallica, it 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 would they all had the same kind of production. Uh, you know, Metallica was leaning Motorhead, right? Slayer definitely had the same sound. Slay- Show No Mercy sounds a lot like Kill 'Em All, with just a little hint of what Slayer was going to become. Mm. Like it was a little bit there. Um, same thing with uh, the first Anthrax. Same thing with the first Megadeth record. They're all kind of similar with their own little unique flavors on them that showed you where they were going to branch off. But out of all the debuts, no brainer. Kill 'Em All is the best. Kill yeah. all is the best. And this album and, just flies flies by, in my opinion. I'm looking at the. It's 51 minutes. It doesn't seem that long, but second second best definitely show no mercy. I yeah I, show no mercy. You know, great, yeah. And then probably the and then probably Megadeth and mm-hmm. Fistful of Metal is not very good. It's not my thing. It's not great. I think uh, it's all right. <laughs> but yeah, this this these songs are classic, and they still play a lot of these songs live. Yeah. Right. Anthrax isn't playing a lot of Fistful of Metal live. Let's just put it that no, way. No, 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 no. You know, and, and even Slayer, they would usually throw in one set track from, they'd throw in like Die by the Sword or something, or maybe a little bit of Black Magic. But dude, especially in recent years, Metallica babies this album. When I saw them yeah. in Vegas, they opened with Hit the Lights. That'd be awesome. No, they opened with Whiplash. A Whiplash, okay. Yeah, they, that was their intro song, and their, 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 the drums were coming in, their little light show was popping in before they broke it's just amazing and like i said this album if you're a kid and you are getting into guitar playing it's chock full of catchy riffs oh absolutely chock full of catchy riffs that are not too hard to play like very catchy it just i mean they're just yeah so we'll give it an a and uh now we're gonna move on to ride the lightning huge jump in evolution from kill them all to ride the lightning we had their first ballad with with fade to black uh a lot more dynamic on this record as far as um structure and format like you know kill them all it sounds like a cohesive album like all those yeah. those 10 songs sound like they belong together yeah now give ride the lightning was a journey it everything worked together but it was like an ebb and flow you you start off with fight fire fire it has a really cool yep. intro and it, it it kicks off with a banger just like really fast but then you know we we go right into like ride the lightning which is a mm-hmm. mid tempo and it's awesome right and then you have anthemic songs like for whom the bell tolls fade to black um creeping death under ice trapped under ice which is awesome escape i love escape i think escape is great Mm. uh and then of course you have call cthulhu Mm. this album was so different than kill them all in my opinion it just had a maturity growth and to me this is their album out of all their albums that was focused on anthems think about it yeah yeah, like no, I totally even, agree. Master Puppets didn't have these type of songs either. Think yeah. about it, like sing along anthemic. Like they knew they were going to be stadium rock someday, yep. and that they play, they play more Ride the Lightning songs than Master Puppets by a long shot. Oh, absolutely, all, all the time because they work and go over well live, especially in a really big arena. Because when you're like at a really big stadium, for example, the the really fast songs don't translate well to the people when the nose bleeds because you're so far away in these 60,000 feet venues, the sound is bouncing around the dome and everything's out of sync. Cause the speed of sound is only so fast. But when you're playing, dum dum and everybody go, Hey, 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 everybody can yep. clap. And then creeping death. You have the, the crowd participation, die, die, die. Just, it was full of fucking anthems. And to me, this album, I mean, obviously it's close. But for me, this is my personal favorite Kirk Hammett album. I love all the solos in this record, dude. The fight, the Ride the Lightning solo, Fade to Black. Ride the Lightning solo is one of my favorites, man. At Fade to Black, obviously, that's the song that wanted me to got me wanting to play guitar. And then, but the Fight Fire, Fire is brilliant. Um, everything. It, Call of Cthulhu, man. What a journey. That's such a great, uh, great instrumental track that just takes you places. No, I totally, oh. I totally agree. This uh, it's funny because this album, uh, "Creeping Death," got me into Metallica, 
And to this day, this is this is the best Metallica album, in my opinion. Mine too. Uh, it's gonna be S. This is my this number is one. A, this is my number one. And but. obviously, it's splitting hairs, and it's close because they have a couple of other albums that I think are also just as good in their own way. But I always just to keep it simple, I say this is my favorite. It was my first love, and I even like how, like, Master of Puppets. In, in a lot of ways was better like as far as that they took they perfected the production but this I love oh the datedness of it <laughs> I oh, love absolutely. it man yeah it's got a vibe and even I don't know maybe someone might think a song like escape is filler because they never play I love escape I used to love that when yeah. I was a kid and it's very unique to Metallica because they never wrote another song like Escape. James Heffield hates that song. <laughs> He's like they don't play I didn't it. Know that. No, but they, they he said he said he hates it because it represents the only time in his whole career career where he was intentionally trying to write a hit. Oh, okay. He's like, okay. yeah, it's like, you know, he's like, he's like, they, I think he said like this is our he said this sounds funny, but this is us trying to write run the run to the hills. Like Iron Maiden. <laughs> You know, something kind of upbeat, you know, something with a chorus. And I think it's a really fun song. And it is. It's positive. It's very upbeat, right? Mm -hmm. Like, out for my own, out to. It's got a sing-along chorus. Like, what the hell? Like, there was no no singing Kill Them All. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I, but I, so I think it produced a really good song. But probably for him on a personal level, it's like, uh, this is me forcing it a little bit. Whatever. I think it's great. And, um, Every song, whereas the beauty of Kill 'Em All is that all those songs really belong together. Mm-hmm. It really feels like one song just goes into the next in a good way, not in a bad way. On the other side, Ride the Lightning, every song is really its own identity. Really. Oh, absolutely. They're all anthems. So, yeah, 100%. That's probably my favorite, and it's always going to be my favorite. Uh, Master Puppets. What's to say about Master of Puppets that hasn't already been said? No, nah, not much. It's my second favorite album. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Master of Puppets, you could argue it's a great companion piece to, to Ride Lightning. They're almost like sister albums. I, I listen to them back to back. But but they're very different in a way, too. Like, to me, Puppets is darker. Yeah. Uh, there's something – even though, like, what am I saying? Ride Lightning, the songs are about nuclear warfare, and then you have – Dying in the electric chair, getting yeah. executed. <laughs> you talk about it biblical... sounds more upbeat though. The way you say, yeah, exactly. yeah, you talk. It's got bi- biblical plague, dude, <laughs> yeah, Exodus yeah. and shit like that. And then you have, uh, <laughs> you know, the story, the Cthulhu story. I uh, call it Cthulhu, and it just it's it's being trapped under ice. <laughs> that's, that's suffering, dude. The 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 songs are actually derived in pretty depressing subject matter. But yeah, there's something more ro- rocky and anthemic so it's kind of more upbeat and it kind of fools you into thinking otherwise but something about puppets man uh master of puppets now we're talking about drug abuse which they didn't talk about yet the the first time i heard battery dude i was blown away i couldn't believe what i was listening to i'm like holy shit this is awesome it it takes a page from ride the lightning they found a formula that worked as far as the sequencing of an album because this Mm -hmm. one does a very very similar thing with one exception it opens up with a classical intro that leads into a fast fucking banger and battery then, then you it goes end into it, the title well you end it with damage incorporated with it, which is just awesome too no it's true so but just like they 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 segue that first banger into the title track just like ride the lightning mm-hmm. and then what what happens in track three just like uh for whom the bell tolls we go into uh a mid-tempo heavy song like we go into thing that should not be it slows yeah. it down which I love thing that should not be, man. Yeah, absolutely. Such a vibe song, dude. It's great. And then what happens in track four? We kind of get our pseudo ballad. It's mm-hmm. not as soft as F- Fade to Black, but it's kind of their ballad, right? You got Welcome yep. Home Sanitarium, uh, which is a really dark song. I think Welcome Home Sanitarium is probably the most atmospheric song. It is. It's great. I love it. I And then uh, you got uh, Disposable Heroes, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. And Leper you got Leper, Ma- Leper Messiah, which is kind of unspoken for, I think, a lot. But that's a great song. And then the only difference here is they flip-flopped. Whereas yep. Ride the Lightning, 
second to last song is creeping death like really their their mission statement song and it ends with the instrumental this one does orion second to last and ends with damage inc which is like to me that's the way it should be damage inc if i as much as ride the lightning is my favorite album if somebody said hey i've never heard metallica before in my life and which i don't know if that person exists what's the one song you would recommend to me that embodies them to get me into them i'd be like damage inc i think yeah damage i can inc, see that yeah damage inc is their thrashiest song it is their best thrash song it's their heaviest song mm -hmm. and it's just everything about it. it's like man if you want to get into okay i wouldn't even say metallica if you want to get into thrash metal and just these kind of bands i would give them damage inc dude 100 percent. absolutely absolutely and this song is an s I, I, this is whole i'm oh, sorry the album is an s everything about it look and i love how iconic the album art is iconic it's awesome everything about it like i said i I'm not saying this album is better than this one. I'm just saying I personally have a soft spot for this. I love this album, right? I think it's better, even though I love both of them. I I can't I can't I can't say that because, dude, to me these are tens. They're both tens. They are, but yeah, and you I know mean, what? I I'm I get it. If somebody wants to say Master is better, that's fine with me because I get it. Master of Puppets, in my opinion, for a metal album, has the perfect production. Yeah, it's it's it's. It's brutal. Everything cuts through. The mix is great, but it's not too polished. It's not too pretty. It's absolutely flawless. All right. So, everybody, this this list is looking like a bet. What you you figured it would look like? It, this isn't the exciting part. We're not we're not speaking out of school with these yet. No, no. <laughs> it's no, gonna no. get interesting a little later, right? Yeah. All right. Actually, it's going to actually start getting interesting now because Injustice for All is fairly divisive, right? Really? I didn't know that. I, well, I'd say it's it's considered one of their beloved albums, but there's more people. There are people that will kind of like criticize this one. Um, hmm. But for me, I mean, I'm just going to – I'll be fair. Okay. I get the flaws of this album. I get it. I get that. Cliff Burton died, and a lot of people think that that was a result with how this album ended up with because Cliff Burton was a huge present on Ride the Lightning and especially Master Puppets. Like yeah. that Master Puppets, that, that's his opus. He, he's all over that album in the composition, his bass soloing. It's insane. It's actually a wonder. I, I think about it all the time. Like if Cliff Burton never died, where would Metallica sound went? Mm -hmm. Because they peaked like he was cool Burt was only just getting started and the way the, this record especially puppet sounds i don't know it, i really want to know where they would have went next but it's a complete 180 because he died and then we got injustice for all which you don't have really too much of that classical element it's melodic but this one is just a riff a solo dude yeah, i and yeah. i but i love it i fucking love it it's it's the james hetfield show <laughs> it's really long songs it's uh complex compositions it's the only time they ever kind of got close to progressive metal right weird off the wall time changes um some people might say this is where their issues with self-editing came but i i don't know i love this fucking album and i get the dry production at the time people were like what is this no bass it's really cold really mm. flat you know scooped mids on the guitars but I didn't know any better when I was a kid. When I was listening to this album, it was just another Metallica album, but it always had this unique flavor to it that oh, made absolutely. it sound different. And I didn't really notice that I wasn't really hearing bass, <laughs> you know? Um, but people might have shit on it back in the day, but the way this record sounds, it influenced a whole next wave of metal bands in the underground that were trying to copy the sound, that dry sound, uh, the scooped guitar mids, you know, where you just scoop all the mids out of your amp. Um, I just, it was very, very influential, if not controversial. And uh, me personally, this is getting an S. <laughs> I, I, despite its obvious flaws. But to me, they're not flaws, they're beauty marks. You know what I mean? No, absolutely. I, and I could see where you would give it an S. I personally, I would give this an A above Kill 'em All. Okay. Um, just because I think those two albums on the top are so iconic where you can't really uh, 
they're one A and one B. Those those S albums, in my opinion. So, and I'm okay with this right here, but I got to keep talking. So, for justice for all, though, if 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 Ride the Lightning has my favorite leads of any Metallic album, this is a close second, by the way, on the leads. Kirk's solos on this are awesome. Oh yeah, they're, absolutely. They're they're just musical. They're songs within songs. And but I'll tell you though, this is James Hetfield's masterpiece of riffs, dude. It's just um, everything about it. Short of straw might be okay. Short of straw, along with uh, Damage Incorporated. I think Short of Straw is awesome. That is a top. That's a top three Metallica song. Fucking love it. Uh, Harvester of Sorrow, dude. I don't know. Ugh. It's okay. a flawless record, dude. It, I, it's fantastic. But it, let's just say you can only choose one Metallica album. To listen to for the rest of your life which one would it be it's gonna be lightning okay if i really had to choose but if you want to know my honest i'm okay with this being here at the top of the a yeah just because i will acknowledge its flaws like its production flaws and but i think that make the they make the album special but i'll, I'll leave it here but in my opinion this is neck this is right behind ride lightning for me i've always i've always put this one like neck and neck or i sometimes i used to say Justice was my favorite. See, yeah, I, you know, I would, yeah. put it, I would put it third. I would put it behind Master of Puppets, Re- I, whether it was I, an A or an S. I, I would. But I'm okay with S. top of the A. I don't want anything ahead of it though on the A. Uh, okay, so that's the classic four. Now we're getting into the big divider, the great divide, the blackout. Obviously, this is where a lot of people jumped off, but it where even more people jumped on. So it was a win for the band. I know people shit on this because it brought them to a whole new stratosphere. This took them from not just being a really big metal band. When I think about Metallica in Master of Puppets era, I think about like Lamb of God. Yeah. Right? The Kind of like the equivalent. But then this album put them in the realms of Bon Jovi. (laughs) <laughs> like like now they were just a big band they weren't um you know they were playing gun, they, they did the co-headline tour with guns and roses they were starting to just break out of just metal which is great the mainstream they got this, mainstream yeah you know and i don't care what anybody says i think his album is fucking awesome uh what can't the the obvious thing to say about the album is how great it sounds it yeah. sounds great and that's one of the best things they could have ever done or they literally got Bob Rock because they, he's the guy that did Dr. Feel Good and Slippery When Wet. So mm-hmm. fans are probably like, oh, what the hell is this? They're getting this fucking cock rock guy. But dude, he didn't, to me, he didn't soften up their sound. Yeah, they they streamlined their sound and they kind of wanted to go in a different direction from Injustice where they were doing eight, nine minute, 10 minute long songs just all over the place, which is great. And they're like, okay, let's strip it down. Let's make simpler songs. Uh, let's get, let's make them earworms. Let's make them four to six minutes long. I don't think that necessarily takes the bite out of your band, but I think the sound, I don't care what anybody says, dude, this is the best sounding album of all time. It, all it, time. So, it sounds phenomenal. And this album has influenced so many damn things too. Um, mm-hmm. when it comes to Metallica, the first thing you think about is the black album, you know, as much as it's not my favorite Metallica album, it is a damn fantastic one. It's, it's it's a junk food Metallica album in a good way. Um, when I say junk food albums, uh, I don't know. It's yeah. just something you pop in and want to drive around and listen to. You know, that's you don't want to sit back in your chair and you know actually listen to this. It's 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 a it's a feast for the ears. Yeah. Like it's just all the different instruments going on and like the sitars and the little there's there's orchestras in there. There's just there there's the, the tracks are just so mul- the guitars are multi tracked to hell. Like it's so thick. It's a like it's a workout into, album. If you're like, but if you're into surround sound, like if you're an audiophile, dude, put a put a high quality set of cans on or whatever. This album is like Dark Side of the Moon. I really think it is. It's it's just there's so much going on. And if you listen to like a if you listen to it on a high quality sound system or whatever, you can hear shit you've never heard before just popping out, dude. There's like so many different instruments going on um, that make it sound as full as it does, to the point where you know they never could. They can never really sound like this album live, 100%, right? When they sing songs like Nothing Else Matters. No, James has like a million different track layers on the vocals, which make it sound great. But, you know, he has to do just one guy singing or whatever. And I always appreciated him for not playing the tracks. Like, they just they just uh, adjust them however they have to for live. It's whatever. 
and but they but they still work live. You could strip down all the crazy production tricks they have, and and party rock song people love that riff it doesn't matter if there's not like four different vocal layers on the chorus or whatever you know what i mean uh so that's the biggest thing but you know what their songwriting in a totally different way it, it leveled up completely dude i don't i don't care if i've heard it. sandman gets a little tiring oh uh, yeah i'm kind of tired of Terrible. that one Terrible. but if you haven't listened to sam dude there was a time where i didn't listen to it for a long time and i put it on in my car and i'm like dude i tried for a second listening to it like it was the first time i ever heard it and i'm like this is a good song regardless of regardless of uh, how used to it i am it, it's 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 like welcome to the intro. jungle it's something i don't want to listen to i don't need to listen to it again i've heard it a million times it is like a welcome to the jungle right something like that it is like a welcome to the jungle or something like that but still it sounds fucking great. So I'll give it that. Now, one song I never get tired of is Sabbath True. Oh, Ever. yeah. Yeah. I would say the True. Unforgiven, but. No. Okay. Well, so Sabbath True, I never get sick of. I think that song is awesome. It is top tier. Great songwriting. It's heavy as fuck. It's really good. And then, yeah, I mean, dude, Unforgiven. Unforgiven has maybe, probably Kirk Hammett's greatest guitar solo. Right? It's up there. And it's, and it's, not super extravagant like a lot of the stuff we got on justice for all right but it's just for the song it's very emotional and it's just awesome but it's just i don't know it serves the song really well it's it's the best i think it's probably his greatest solo if i'm being honest and i don't really get tired of nothing else matters to be honest with you i think nothing else matters is the greatest ballad ever written it's a great if i could, great song. If I could be biased it's recorded great it sounds amazing there to me, um, there's not a bad track on this album. I love everything about it. Even the ones I think people would say are kind of fillers, the ones that they don't play. I love, I love, um, don't tread on me. I think it's fun. Oh, great song. Yeah. <laughs> it's upbeat. It's got a cool, I love struggle within. I love my friend of misery. It's so great. Uh, I love Wolf and man. What a great song. What a great, it, it's about a werewolf. It's like, it's not super serious, yeah. but it's awesome, dude. And even that, like the midsection, I feel a change. And you have the Kirk's guitar almost kind of doing like the howling move. Like a, it's awesome. And I remember how like uh, Jason Newstead used to be such a live asset. And you know, got new wolves out there. <laughs> I love it, dude. It's just so great. Uh, All right, where do you put this? I kind of hate that I have to put it behind Justice. To be honest with you, because I mean, oh, dude, you know what? let's stop for a second when we usually do these tier lists we didn't even go over the criteria do we not grade them off multiple things like how we like them uh how much they've influenced and 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 how how timeless they are by that criteria alone i think it's an s dude even if i say this is i put this over it oh, dude God. this this album sounds timeless as hell i think it's always going to sound great it's the benchmark this is pre-digital this is still cutting to tape and the songs are going to live forever, dude. The impact is insane. Now, I lose you. I feel like, for better or worse, the Black Album is where. Can you hear me? I got you now. Okay. So, what I was saying, not to sound redundant, Whereas Puppets, Justice, Kill Em All, I feel like they influenced a lot of heavier bands. Mm. For better or worse, the Black Album influenced – this is where we yeah, got Godsmack yeah. from, right? And a lot of bands who did not do it as well. And that that I should we shouldn't hold that against Metallica because I could say that about Pantera too. Yeah, People I'm... hold Pantera very pe – people hold Pantera so dear. But, dude, it, it, Pantera is the reason why we have fucking Five Finger Death Punch. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, but um, I'm, I'm I fine with it. I'm fine with it there. Yeah, it's just the impact is imminent, man. It's just, yeah, yeah. Okay. Moving along, this is where it's going to get a little interesting. We'll try and pick it up a little bit here. Uh, obviously, we have load, another drastic shift. This is where it's going to get uh, fun. What do you think about load? Um, I don't go back to it as much. Um, I think it is a solid album. Um, 
there is probably a handful of songs that I really love on this album. I wouldn't by any means give it an A. Um, I would probably do it a B. Um, that's just my personal opinion. So if it isn't, if you would give it an A, I would give it a low A because this is, I mean, this is a new sound and everything, but it's still, it's still a fun album, man. Um, it's one I got into. I remember listening to God, what was that music video they always played on uh, Till It Sleeps. Until it sleeps, yeah, um, which I loved. I thought that was awesome, and um, they that that kind of got me into a lot of the newer Metallica stuff uh, back in the day. So um, I did I do enjoy this album though. Okay, so this is where it gets a little weird for me, just because the load, the reload. While I was around and I was a kid when Black Album and shit was out, Load and Reload came out when I was ten and eleven. So this is my real formative years. So this is when I was really latching on. So I definitely have bias with these records. So, but I'm going to try and take that bias filter off a little bit. I've always loved load a lot. Like I've, I've always put dude load really high now, but I can acknowledge from an outsider's perspective, how it might seem a little bloated, like a little long in the tooth. Mm -hmm. And maybe e even though I have a certain soft spot for every song on this record, I do. I, I, that's all, maybe it's just all stemmed from uh, nostalgia, but I will acknowledge that, yeah, even if I like them, some of the songs probably aren't as good as some of the higher, there's other songs that are definitely higher than others, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but dude, what's here, in my opinion, is fucking incredible. So you have, I think, um, I think Until It Sleeps is awesome. I think it's a great song. I think King Nothing is fucking awesome. Hero of the Day. What's up, Butts Rea? How you doing? Uh, yeah, okay. Hero of the day, I think is awesome. I think uh, even me. even even a lot of the I see. I'm telling you, I like the deep cuts. I even like two by four. I like Cure, but I I, I get how some people might see these as like more Mama said really good. Mama said's great. Even like Thorn Within, which is probably at the bottom of the list. Even weird songs like um, Poor Twisted Me. I like yeah. it. It's like this weird Western song. It's got a weird vibe to it. And then I love Ronnie. Am I on crack, everybody? I fucking like Ronnie. That like country Western. Down, down, down. It's almost like, uh, you know, it, it's almost like it, it sounds like it came out of a Clint Eastwood Western, the way it's all designed and shit like that. But he's he's singing about a kid that shoots up a school. Like, you know, mm. uh, it, I, I've always loved that song. And then say what you will about the ebbs and flows maybe uh you know not as consistent as some of the older this album has two of the greatest songs in their entire catalog hands down i will say it right now cutting out yeah sorry i'm just gonna have to but no, I think Bleeding Me and Outlaw Torn are the greatest songs. Like, they're the greatest songs James Heffel's ever written lyrically. The lyrics are super great. They're super poetic. And they're just really powerful compositions. So that elevates the album for me 100%. But if you want me to put it as a high B, I will. Well, yeah, because cultural relevance. I mean, this was... Yeah. This was, this was hated. This wasn't... Nobody really loved this. I mean, I, I really like this album. But uh, I couldn't put it in the tier for, with Kill Em All and Justice. Yeah, I mean, as far as cultural relevance, it's in the shadow of Black Album. Like, this yeah. is kind of the period where most people forget about as far as, like, oh, this is when they were being very 90s or whatever. Uh, yeah, this isn't – I don't think um, I don't think anybody is going to start a band wanting to sound like Load Era Metallica. Cause, no. Because what's funny – because, I mean, Metallica was just kind of sounding like a lot of bands that they were influenced by the time, like Caius – and corrosion conformity and obviously black sabbath like i mean this is a very black sabbathy album stuff like two by four these are these are kind of sabbathy groovy riffs so it's 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 kind of almost taking a page from bands that were already like they were influenced by but I, i'm okay with that even though me personally man i oh it's it's high for me so that one's tough that's a pill i gotta swallow and a compromise um so reload now similar story these cat, these are sister albums that came out back to back. It's it's always been a peg behind load though. Um, 
I don't know why there are some differences, even though most of everything is from the same sessions. The songs on Reload are overall more upbeat, a little bit yeah. speedier, uh, a little bit more rocking. And to me, people shit on this album, but I, I think it's like good heavy rock like Guns N' Roses. I, I, I get it. It's not like a metal album or anything else, but it's just good heavy rock, man. Like, I don't. It's like Load, where I get where some people might cite the filler tracks, but I'm a sucker for every album song on this album. But but I acknowledge the strengths, you know. What yeah, do you think it's, of the it's a solid album and it has a lot of tracks I I enjoy too. This is not one I go back to a, a ton. Um, I'd rather listen to Load, but I do put it up there next to Load because I think it is a solid B album. We'll pair them know? together, but yeah. So I think the same thing. If I can just do a quick rundown. I think fuel and maybe it's overplayed. It's a great song. It's, yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's a well written radio song, super catchy, great solo. Everything about it's great. Vocal hooks. I think um, memory remains is awesome. It's one of their best singles. It's yeah. just a well crafted song. Super super for me iconic of nineties, dude. That Mary and Faithful. Nah 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 nah. Yeah. And I love that video. I love how nineties. It looks just like the Hanson video. Every. <laughs> Like just like the effects, the '90s effects that going at rotary effect, and even like their hair looks '90s and yeah. <laughs> everything. Kirk Cameron's got the short hair, and it looks it looks like a Hanson video, and I love it. Uh, but, um, but I love, dude. Think about it. the first half of this record, especially. Uh, then you have Devil's Dance, awesome. Unforgiven Two, I love it. I don't care what anybody says. I think it's a great song. And then Better Than You is rocking uh slither i get it i have a soft spot because of nostalgia but i get it that's like the weaker but then carpe diem baby that's like their biggest sleeper i think it sounds amazing and i wish it wasn't such a sleeper song because that's yeah the b side of this album is very forgettable in my opinion oh it carpe diem it, it peaks early oh carpe diem is awesome dude and then you have uh i mean jumping ahead you have like things like I get it. Maybe it's kind of the forgettable tracks, but I love like attitude, dude. They're like heavy, just rocking songs. They're, they're fun, like bar rock. Uh, and I love low man's lyric. I think it's great. And I love fixer. How could you not dude? Fixer. It's kind of like the counterpart to, uh, how load ends with outlaw torn Fixer's kind of that big epic of this album. I think Fixer's great. If you don't like fixer, can't be friends. Such a great song, dude. Everything about it. And the production, on these albums, it's it's carrying off where Black Album left, dude. There's such great productions by Bob Rock. Uh, but I'm happy with this. Um, I'm going to include Garage Inc. Now, it should be noted that this also includes the 598 Garage Days re-revisited EP that came out in the late 80s, right after uh, Jason Newstead joined the band. And that was disc two. And disc one was all new, right? And they just yep. kind of re-released it as a two-pack. But... This one's gonna be hard to grade because it's a covers album. So it's like, do we yeah. do we grade it based on it being a covers record? Do we really stack it up with these, or do we do we just treat it like it's one of the albums? To be fair, I don't know. Uh, just treat it like it's one of the albums. I mean, I think it's fantastic. I fucking love this record, dude. I, everything about it. No, I and I'm there with you. I would I would put this behind Kill 'Em All, in my opinion, because I, so I I think it's fantastic as well. I think it's a great. I mean, there's nothing there's nothing bad on these. I mean, no. the, the the new disc that came out in 1998. You have a uh, the Sabra Cadabra, which is the the hybrid of a National Acrobat and uh uh what's the other Sabathon Sabra Sabra Cadabra. They blended them into one track. Beautiful. The turn the page cover is awesome. Uh, Die Die My Darling, the Misfits track, I, the, yeah, the Nick great. Cave song. It's mm. they they went all over the place with this and it was great. And then you have Discharge on there. You have uh oh the Blue Oyster Cult dude, the fucking Astronomy. It's yeah, great. Uh, that's good. And the Merciful Fate medley. Forget about it. Five different Merciful Trait songs in there. It's so great. And then uh, just to give a nod to the 598 EP, they tagged on with it. That's great. You have a lot of Stone Cold Metallica classics in there that are like staples. A lot of people think they're just Metallica songs. You got Helpless, Blitzkrieg, obviously, um, Am I Evil, right? It, it, uh, Last Caress. It's fucking great. Everything about it, it's awesome. Um, like I swear to, if this if this wasn't a covers record, I'd probably put it higher. But I'm gonna put it right here. No, yeah, I'm with you on that. All right, and then kind of speeding it up here. Live album. Not just any live album. This is a symphonic live album. Metallica with the San Francisco Orchestra came out in 1999 impressions of this 
a lot of people shit on this, but I love this album, man. Who who shits on it? I think Call Me a Fanboy. And obviously a little bit is just my attachment to it because there's a lot of great live albums in history. This is my personal favorite live album of all time. It's it's it, it's, it's not for me, but it's a damn good one, man. It's it's really good. I because usually I'm not the biggest fan of live albums. Like usually I'll take the studio recordings. Usually. But where this is special is this gives us something a studio recording can't give us, right? It gives us another version of the song. Like, yeah, if I I I love I love how Hero of the Day sounds on load. You get a little bit of difference. You know, his singing's a little bit different on the album, but this one you get the orchestra. Yeah. And it's just it's a whole nother level, man. And dude, I mean, Hero of the Day, nothing else matters, and um Outlaw Torn. Tracks like that, dude, they're they're taken to whole different levels on this record. And like I said, they're all great. Like I love little things like Outlaw Torn. I like the original too because he does things with his voice that he doesn't do on this with like on this one. Like just little nuances he does in in some of the vocal lines that he doesn't replicate here, which is like, okay, if I miss those little nuances, I, I love listening to load. But dude, what I sacrifice there, you get so much crazy shit on this one, which is the orchestra. Um that's why it just stands apart from me. And I actually love his weird singing voice in this record. I don't know what it is, but he was going through a thing where he wanted to sing like Chris Isaac. <laughs> he wasn't none of the he wasn't singing anything aggressive. Yeah. Like he was he was doing this like Chris Isaac, uh give me fuel, give me five, give me that was that is uh oh, you know. Definitely definitely unique. And I, I appreciate when artists do that too. And I and, and maybe stuff. I don't I don't know if it was because of his throat but whatever he did it's it sounds special to this record right well you know he wasn't he was doing that oh that croony voice you know, like a la it, it just sounds great uh it just gives me different versions so for me it's up here with like garage i mean you know and i don't know if you would put it ahead or behind but if, if you agree with me well it sounds like that this album is kind of your um your live album to my live on two legs album. So yeah, uh, that's probably my favorite live album ever. So, and I would put it up there as like one of their best, but how can we do that? Can we still do that with a live album? I, I think it's got to go somewhere. It's got to go interchanged with, it's got to go garage behind. Inc. It's got to go behind garage. Inc. You opinion. think behind I'll, yeah. I'll do that. Uh, I, to note though, this also has two tracks that were brand new. Right. Yeah, that's true. Uh, they never Before played minus clover, human. Minus clover. human died after this, even though minus human's cool. But no leaf clover became a staple, and it was a number one rock radio hit. And I've seen Metallica live ten times, and I've heard them play no leaf clover twice. So they still play it. Yeah. Every now in a blue moon, and dude, no leaf clover is awesome. And no leaf clover definitely sounds different than the rest of the album because whereas the orchestra was weaving into pre-written songs. They wrote No Leaf Clover with the orchestra in mind, and they really worked together, right, on that track. Yeah, that's a really good track. And it's it's really fantastic. Oh. Oh, God, I forgot my... Was that you, an you, open, you, dude? You, for, you forgot the best album, Metallica Shit. album. I forgot saying... Dude, there's probably people that are watching this video and post, like, I don't even see St. Anger there. What, they're not going to talk about Saint Anger. They're, is it, they're probably going to say like, "Oh, when they get to it, they're going to be like, well, that album's not even worth mentioning." That pisses me off that I don't have Saint Anger on here." I just I noticed that now too. Okay, can I not? God, can I not? Uh... <laughs> I'm going to see if I can find my picture, dude. I got it right here. I don't think I can add it into there, but uh, oh, it's not there. I didn't save the file. All right, so. Hold that thought. I'm going to fucking fix this problem right now. Uh, <laughs> Looks like you had I, ad going, too, on bottom of the video. Oh, whatever, dude. Come on. Buy. Consume. <sighs> Give me just two seconds here. A new Pokemon gonna... game on Switch. Is that what this is? Oh, the ad, dude? Yeah. All right, so... Oh, yeah, there is an ad right there. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So getting back up to speed here. So I'm just going to do this number really quick and kind of cheat it a little bit.
All right. I don't think it works. So we're just going to have to fake it. Saint Anger. <laughs> Fucking save the wrong file, but it's my bad. Uh, but Saint Do Anger. Do you need to pull a new one for you and send it to you? No, I have it, but I don't know how to add it to the ongoing oh. thing. Oh, I can't. If, you, if you get out of it, then is it messed up? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can't. Yeah, I can't add it. So that's what I'm saying. Oh. So it's it's not a big deal. Where does Saint Anger go? We'll just talk about it. There you go. You could. Uh, we know where Saint Anger is going to go. So it's enough. Not having. A... Okay. So, but I'm going to be completely fair to Saint Anger. Like I said, I think uh, if you want me to be fair on the albums I love and not be a fanboy, I got to be. I'm, I'm going to give the positive and negatives about everything. I'm going to try and find the positives and everything. And I have found some positives about Saint Anger. Uh, we could shit on it all day long. We know the problems with it. Now, my thing is. It's an album full of almosts because every song is half like half baked where there's there's good ideas. There's good ideas to be found in every song, but they're not capitalized on. Every song is over long. And even when you have like some of the better tracks, they're always ruined by something, right? Like I love I for a long in the video, by the way. Uh, Unnamed Feeling has promise besides dude the, the the fucking elephant in the room is the snare sounds like shit the album sounds like it's raping your ears yeah. it sounds super cut and paste like just yeah. it sounds fragmented it sounds like everything was dragged and dropped and it just sounds so not organic it just it hurts my ears but if I can look aside that I think there's a good song in Unnamed Feeling but then they ruin it with the bridge when all of a sudden it gets cringe, like, get the fuck out of here. I just, I heard I, it's like, what are we doing? You ruined it. You almost had a good one. I never um, got that far. And then I, I, I think there's good things to say about frantic. There's good things to say about the title oh, track. No, uh, there's, there's nothing good to say about frantic, but, oh. but I'm saying like the, the actual product, they just didn't turn out good. A good idea is, is nothing unless it's really capitalized and delivered. Um, so I, I've always been curious, a good way to really like, at least see some of the possible what ifs from this album is to look at the many, um, takes that people on YouTube have done. Like there's people on YouTube that have re-recorded it, done live versions themselves and re-record and they've edited it down. And there's one video, dude, these guys, this guy, these band, they did it. And they, it sounds way better than the album. Like they edited the songs, they they tweaked the arrangements a little bit. I'm like, see, for trying something bold and really fun, being like, were they trying to chase the times? I don't know what they were doing, because it's like let's ditch solos when solos were not cool anymore. And um, it, it, I, took I don't, him, it took them six years to put out this piece of crap. Nobody, I think some people like to say, oh, this is them trying to be new metal. Dude, I don't know what kind of new metal you're listening to. No, but this not. doesn't sound like it. This sounds like avant garde. I don't know what this is. It's like uh, their Yoko Plastic Ono Band album, where it's like yeah. this weird shit. I kind of respect it to a degree. Um, but part of me kind of wants to give it a D minus just because I respect, like, <laughs> Give it a D minus. I don't care. It's an F. It's a shitty album, my opinion. It's a it's an album that if somebody gave it to me, I would never listen to it. I remember being so excited for this album too, because this was the first album to come out since what? Reload. And after first. watching after watching the documentary, I was like, okay. Now let's listen to the album, and the album was just, oh, my God. Yeah. I'm not saying that the album didn't have its merits because it was a sacrificial lamb. I get it. Metallica wouldn't be around if it wasn't for this album. <laughs> what they, they did, and they put – and the documentary, I think, is fantastic, even though it's painful to watch, <laughs> like, as a fan of the band. But as a movie lover, I think it's a great documentary. Yeah. It, you white, know, it's yeah. – the fact that it makes you feel uncomfortable and like, uh, that just shows you they're doing good. Like it's a good documentary and it captures something pretty cringe. Um, so I get it. Um, and, and 
I, I don't, I don't know. It's, this album is just so odd. But like I said, I would actually be willing to give it like a D. But if you want to give it an F, I understand because I think everything on it. It doesn't matter either. Either one. We everybody knows it's not that great, and it's not going to be showing on here anyway. I, I just think that there were ideas there. None of them were capitalized on. Okay, so it's not here. I apologize. I don't have the dumb picture because I'm not a pro here. But let's just imagine it's right here somewhere. <laughs> okay. Going on to uh, what a lot of people thought was their big redemption. Fast forward five years, they came out with Death Magnetic. Another flawed record. I want to get your take on this record. I think I cut out. Sorry. Yeah, you cut it. That's all right. So this album, I was actually not looking forward to to it at all going into it. And I was uh, I was pleasantly surprised. I actually do enjoy this album uh, for what it is. It's definitely, like you said, it's not perfect. But um, I don't know. The uh, The sound of this album was, uh, I was not expecting it from uh, Metallica in, what, what was this, 2009, I believe? 2008. Um, 2008 so uh yeah i would i actually enjoy it It, it's one underrated album i think for metallica if uh if i can say so like nobody talks about it at all i mean people talk about you know hardwired i believe more than they do this in my personal opinion no uh in hindsight it's weird man because i think this album has a lot of fan what's funny though just like uh saint anger dude it's so funny Saint Anger, you you wouldn't be caught dead liking that record in 2003 when it came out. But now, fast forward, dude, 15 years after, like starting about five years ago, I started noticing a lot of praise for Saint Anger. That blows my mind. And you know what it is, though? It's because just like me in Load and Reload, that's when I was coming up and really developing. So I have a soft spot for those albums. There were kids that were like 10 years old when when saint anger came out and that was their first exposure to metallica That's and that true. was their gateway and going backwards so there was a whole slew of kids now that are now like 25 30 that are like i grew up on saint anger and they love yeah. it so it's it's this whole fucking thing and i'm i'm actually fascinated by that yeah uh same thing with death magnetic uh so i think death magnetic is i think it's a i think it's a solid record i think uh it's got good songs i think they were trying to really capture that injustice for all energy uh because the songs are really long they're just they threw every fucking riff <laughs> they could fit in any song and just kind of like you know threw it all at the wall and let it stick uh for better or worse i think that works in a lot of the songs i i think the production is shit i think i hate the way it's it's not very original for me to say i hate how dry it sounds uh, it, it, it's mastered so insanely loud to where it's just it's clipping. Whenever you have the really loud choruses where like James is really getting up there, it starts breaking up in your headphones. It's it's amateur in that sense, and that's a you know everybody blames Rick Rubin for that. Rick Rubin's all about making these really flat recordings, not dynamic, very flat, straight down the middle, dry, cold recordings. He's famous for it. Listen to the Chili Peppers records. The Chili Peppers records are all like that. The Chili Peppers though. It doesn't affect as much because they're they're not as full of a sound. They got one guitar player, one bass player, a drummer, and a singer, and they don't multi-track. It, it kind of works, you know, because they're not playing like big epic riffs and big co- Metallica though. It's just, dude, it was just it didn't work. And Master Puppets. But with that said, there's some great songs on here, and there's one bad song on here i think there's some really good songs there's some okay songs and there's one shit song i think my apocalypse is fucking terrible the last song i don't even cringe. remember my apocalypse my apocalypse do, 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 do. i hate it i think it's just it's cringe even though like some people say it's like the best i think it's bad but i like uh every other song and then as far as the highlights i really like um uh all nightmare long is really catchy to me that's yeah. a standout from the album because it sounds the most like because a lot of the songs on here are, are they're reminiscent of like older songs and prior like, yeah like but to me uh hunt you down without mercy hunt you back that's a that's a hooky song it's it's in drop d so it's tuned a little different than the rest of the songs it's just it sticks out i also love the instrumental i love uh, i think broken beat and scarred is, is catchy too 
I, I like. Kid. I actually like Unforgiven three, and I remember seeing I, that. I did too. I remember yeah. seeing that live when we went to go see him, and that was like the first time they played it in a long time, and it was pretty cool. It was either the first or second time they only they played it ever. And oh, only. Okay. they yeah. never play. So, uh, yeah, I think Unforgiven three is great. I think it, it, it's only hindered by the production. Yeah, it, that's it. I actually think it sounds better live. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, it's just because it's mastered so high. You can't really hear the orchestra that's yeah. in that song because there's an orchestra. And I'll tell you something. Get the vinyl because the vinyl sounds so much better. OK. Oh, it's it, dude, I, I, when I was listening to the vinyl like some months back when I picked it up, I kind of fell in love with it. I'm like, dude, this is really good because I think they used because they had to go back and remaster the album for Guitar Hero. Remember? Yeah. They put it on Guitar Hero and they remastered it. Tube, the rips, and it's the better sounding version because it's they remastered it and took the levels down. Mm. And you could suddenly hear everything that was getting clipped out. And I think they took those masters and did it for the vinyl because the vinyl sounds so much fucking better. Um, it's great. Um, anyway, I think I like I like Judas Kiss a lot. I think that's a great song. No one talks about that one. I think it's got great riffs. I think, uh, like I said, the uh, Suicide and Redemption is a great instrumental. It's really great. Yeah, I mean, I I like I like everything. I I just don't like the last song. That's really it. And a couple of the songs I would edit down a little bit, but you know, nitpicking. It's a solid record for me. I think it's here. It's B minus or C plus, in my opinion. Yeah, too. I would say it's a B minus or a C plus. Um, I don't know. Pick one. What do you think? For me, based on reception and impact, it's too recent to have a huge impact. But you know what I mean. Like now, we're kind of hard to expect that. I think yeah. St. Anger has more influence. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because St. Anger is uh, more of a – that album was – St. Anger, Anger was almost 20 years ago, and I you can hear St. Anger in some newer song, newer bands, and there's yeah. kids out there. I don't think we're there yet to where people are like, oh, I love this song. I love this album. Kids aren't old enough yet. This is just, what, 14 years ago? Yeah. I'm fine so with I don't think it, B minus or C plus. Let's go C plus. All right. We're, we're getting – okay, so here – I'll tell you straight, this album uh, is really mixed. Some people put this, are like, oh, this is so much better than Death Magnetic. Some people are like, oh, God, Death Magnetic was so much better. Uh, I, I've got friends that are on both sides of the spectrum there. I I don't know where I sit. I know when I heard it, I was like, oh, this is better than Death Magnetic because I, I, I like the production. And it kind of brought back... I like the load sound. It had a little bit of the load stuff going through there. It had a little bit of the old school. It had a little bit of everything and it kind of fit. Uh, the biggest thing about this record is the first half. Awesome. All bangers. Mm -hmm. The first six songs I'm, were I'm great. With, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. And then the biggest thing that hurts this record is the sequencing because you get to set the second part or disc two. And we, we have the lesser songs clumped together. And, you know, it, 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 the lesser songs aren't even like bad songs. It's just that, in my opinion, dude, the first, the first, the first disc is like they're firing off, man. They're eights, nines, and tens all back to back to back. They're really good and they work together. And then we get like three or four sixes, not bad next to each other. Yeah, spit out the bone is great though. Yeah, well, no, spit out the bone is great. But I mean, I like, I like, I think confusions of solid song i i don't think they're bad songs it's they're just, forgettable I, I just think when you put all the fucking nines and tens together and then you put all the sixes in a clump it just it weighs the album down i think at all those songs would have worked better if they were woven differently like you know what i yeah. mean like ordered mm -hmm. differently because it would be different if you had like oh fuck a hardwired or a atlas rise which are great and then you had like a confusion and yeah, then you had yeah. like fucking uh, Halo on fire. If they were just sequenced differently, I think the whole album would be stronger. It's as simple as that. No, uh, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. But also if you, if you're not going to do that, that's that album had 12, 12 songs, but honestly you got six great songs on disc one. You have uh, what's it, what's it called? Spit out the bone, which is seven songs. And honestly, I think, I think confusion and I think, uh, uh, God, what?
it had a but i don't know why they're afraid to do eight song albums anymore but you could have just cut off a few songs and left the good shit and it would have been better you know what i mean yeah and this was a double disc cd too which probably didn't need to be well, like I said, they could have just removed, trimmed the fat yeah. of three songs, and it would have been stronger. But the but the good songs are still there. So for me personally, I put it above Death Magnetic. It can it can go either way. I mean, it depends on what mood I'm in. You know, I'll yeah. listen to either one. So yeah, I, I I'm kind of the same way. I don't really know, but they're going to be. And the last one we'll talk about is S N M two before we close I'll, out. Here. I'll leave this. I'll leave this to you because I never even listened to S N M two. Okay, so S N M two. I get it. It's a celebration, 20th anniversary from the first one, but this is a shadow <laughs> of of the first S and M. I am going to give this a a low C. I I just S and M two sounds like a to its credit, it sounds like a warts and all live performance. It kind of sounds like a live album where you know you can hear the echo. Sounds like you're sitting in the seats. Um, sounds very imperfect. S and M is studio doctored, like yeah, most live albums. Awesome, yeah. But but it is like S and M is like all, all those classic fucking live albums you love, like Made in Japan or uh, uh, Priest Unleashed in the East, One Hundred One Proof, Pantera. All these albums, they're all taken to the studio after. Dimebag Daryl, at One Hundred One Proof, he overdubbed his rhythms in the studio. To make it sound crisper yeah. and chunkier, like an album. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes in the case of like Unleash in the East Judas Priest, the whole thing was recorded in the studio and they added a fake audience. Mm. Some bands re record vocal, or some people, some bands will um, take a song where they were fucking up a little bit or their voice, and they would just re record that part or little pieces. If, if they, they, they know going in that they're going to record for a live album, so they're not going to release something that's shit. Right, and everything about fucking S and M one sounds perfect, and and I'm pretty sure, like I said, there's some post work, right? So, but this one's magical, and this one, it, there's a few different songs that aren't on this, which kind of make it cool, but it just sounds thin by comparison. It's just, I don't know. I I think they should just left this alone and let it be special. It, 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 basically, in a nutshell, maybe there's a couple of tracks on this one that are not on this one, but other than those. Why would you listen to this if you have this? That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. Yeah, that's why I never it, even. Yeah, because there's a lot of repeat songs. It's like, no, mm-hmm. you've already got perfection. But are you happy with this list before we wrap up? I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's great, man. All right. And I'm really hoping to, to my final comment when this new album comes out, uh, 72 seasons, you know, I, I keep my expectations in check. Do I expect it to kind of be in here or in here, Max? Yes. Am I really hoping I can get an A album? Oh, I'm, I'm really hoping. I'm really hoping. And, and, and I just want to also say, I feel like the way I'm ranking these, I'm just trying to be fair. Like, I'm a Metallica fan. Like, for me personally, there's a lot of C records out there that I will listen to Death Magnetic over any day. But I'm just trying to, like, in, in, in Metallica scope. Yeah, like, absolutely. Death Magnetic is a C compared to these. But, like, honestly... I've listened to Death Medic a shit ton. You know how many hours I've listened to Death? Dude, I was hooked on. I listened to this album over and over and over and over again when I came out. I can't think of very many other C's that I did that to. So this mm-hmm. is all just in scale of Metallica, more or less, right? About mid-April. It's not very far, so I'm I'm actually pretty excited about. It's coming up. The Saint Anger Scafu. I don't think it really matters, right? Yeah, thank no. you, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Please like the video, all that good stuff. Subscribe. That's that's about it, guys. Bye. Later.